I just wonder, I just wonder how many radio stations around the world uh, is possibly playing that song right at this very moment. The Beatles there and Hey Jude. Good morning, GTFM on 107.9 FM and online on this Thursday morning, uh, just after a quarter past 11. So the 60th anniversary of the Beatles playing the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. It was on this very night of August the 29th, 1959, that John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison and Ken Brown played this iconic venue in West Derby in Liverpool. Joining me on the line now is somebody, well what can you say, how can you introduce this next guest? How can you introduce him? It was his mother, Mona Best, who founded the Casbah Coffee Club 60 years ago today and he joins me live from Liverpool. Uh, what can I say? Uh, good morning to you, Rogue Best. Hello, hello there, Rog. Are you there? <laughs> and then it kind of went, oh, right, okay, that's what you call modern technology, Rog. Anyway, let me introduce you again. Rog Best, of course, it was your mother who founded the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool uh, 60 years ago. What an occasion! Yeah, 60 years ago today, uh, we did our anniversary celebrations at the weekend. Uh, we tied in with um, uh, the International Diesels Week, or should I say, they tied in with us because the Casbah was actually there before International Diesels Week. So uh, we did an outdoor and indoor event on the Saturday to celebrate its, uh, its, uh, the Casbah's birthday, uh, as where it truly all began. And we had, um, it was a great event, we had um, uh, two and a half thousand people, uh, a real mix, Australian, Malaysian, you know, USA, Norway, Holland, you name it, they literally came from all the corners of the world and it was just an absolutely fantastic celebration. Now, I mentioned in the, in the introduction, Rogue, uh, about uh, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison and Ken Brown. Now, of course, Ken is, uh, of course, sadly no longer with us, but he was there that night and he actually played with the other three members, Rogue, didn't he? That's right. Well, Ken, Ken, uh, Ken drafted, a, drafted a book of which we're thinking of doing something with at some time called Some Other Guy. And he was that some other guy. It was Ken that... Uh, basically brought George Harrison to the Casbah. It was George that basically said, I've got two friends who aren't doing anything. So it was Ken that basically brought George, Paul and John back together playing in a unit. And a lot of people don't realize that at that time. George was playing for a, a different group. He wasn't playing with John and Paul. And John and Paul weren't playing for anybody. Right, and of course, um Mona, your mother, Mona Best, I mean, it was her idea. It was a fantastic idea, of course, uh, to get, the, I suppose you could say, to get the kids off the street roll. Yeah, she was inspired by um, the Two Eyes Coffee Bar in London. Um, she watched a TV programme called The Six Five Special, um, saw this rock and roll uh, bar, realised there was nothing like that in Liverpool and because she had hordes of teenagers marauding through her house and could see them in the local area standing round looking bored to the back teeth she thought I'm gonna do that and, uh, and she did. And how long did it take her to get it actually off the ground because we're we talking months? Yeah, it, 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 they started, it took them about, about six months. Once she watched the television programme on the Friday night, they actually st they started the following morning, but it did take about six months because there was a few things they attempted that didn't work first time round. And don't forget, these are, uh, these are teenage boys putting this whole thing together. You know, they weren't builders, they were teenage boys having a go. And, uh, of course, sometimes it didn't go right and she would have to bring someone professional in to, to sort it out but she got there in the end and of course uh, john lennon famously uh, he contributed because he was a very artistic uh, young man anyway rogue wasn't he 
Yeah, uh, well, they all can, all can uh, have their contributions, Gareth. John did a, an, a, an Aztec ceiling um, in, in what's now known as the Aztec room. It wasn't back in the day, obviously. He did an Aztec ceiling. Paul did a rainbow ceiling above the original stage. John and Pete did this coloured block ceiling above the, the second stage. And basically the five original Beatles, John, Paul, George, Stu and Pete, all did the stars and the ceiling in the bar area. So we're, we're talking about a, a rock and roll club that was decorated basically from when, the moment you walk in to the moment you walk out by members of the Beatles. And it's all still there, Gareth. And it was at this time, uh, Rogue, that of course your brother Pete uh, was asked to join the band. Yeah, Pete was playing, but again, uh, this was, uh, we were mentioning Ken Brown before, and when the Quarrymen situation fell apart, Ken Brown put a, another group together called the Blackjacks, persuaded to pick Pete to take up drums. John Paul and George saw Pete playing in the Blackjacks, and of course asked him to join the Silver Beatles, which then became the Beatles. So it's all, it's all interwoven, Gareth, all these strange little paths. Yeah, a, a fantastic history. And of course, uh, they went on to play in Hamburg for two years and of course the cabin. But what a lot of people don't realise, the Casbah came before the cabin. Casbah came uh, quite a bit before the cabin. Um, they, the, their lineup was playing the, uh, 29, uh, from the 29th of August 1959 as the Beatles they were playing there from uh, December 1960. And their actual first booking at the cabin was instigated by our mother because she was booking them into dance halls under the guide of guys of Casbah Promotions uh, but felt that they needed to be in the city centre and she had a real tough time persuading Ray McFall, the owner of the cabin club, to take a chance on a rock and roll band called the Beatles. So she, a little bit of persuasion, definitely uh, worked, and of course the rest, as we know, is history. So how long was the Casbah actually open for altogether, Rogue? Oh, let's see, it was uh, about six, 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 two and a half years. Okay. Now then, of course, it's one of the iconic venues for obvious reasons. So listeners, um, if they are planning a visit to Liverpool in the next couple of months, maybe in 2020, uh, how could they come along? Because people can actually visit the Casbah. Yeah, we're open seven days a week. Um, we're now on the Beatles Tourist Trail, or as we say, the Casbah Coffee Club, the holy grail of the Beatles Trail. But if they want to book online, they can book through PeteBest.com. And um, yeah, that's most probably the easiest way, the easiest way to kickstart it. Have a look at PeteBest.com. And I've got to ask, how is Pete? He's really, really well, Gareth. We've worked him to death over the weekend. <laughs> Signing Saturday day, he did two performances Saturday evening. He did a, a, an audience with Pete on the Monday. He did another record signing on the Monday. Um, he, did a, uh, he did three meet and greets on the Monday. And uh, <laughs> I've got to admit, by the end of Monday, I thought, God, what a trooper. What an absolute trooper. And I guess it, because you're the manager, his manager, um, does he ever ask you for a day off? <laughs> well, he took he took this year off, Gareth. He had a sabbatical and he basically said he was doing nothing this year. And then I persuaded him, you know, obviously when he announced he wasn't going to do anything, I said, well, it's the Casbah 60th. He said, oh, I'll do that. He said, I'll do stuff over that weekend. Well, basically the rest of the year, he's had a wonderful time travelling all over the world. Because I was just going to say he does that, and of course um, he's still extremely popular in the states. Uh, well, yeah, um, he's. Uh, um, we're returning to the USA next year and it's, uh, to tour. We haven't toured in the USA for oh, I think it's about five, six years now. So I think that's going to be. Uh, uh, I think a, a good time will be had by all. And of course, what some people don't realise, of course, they know uh, of, of Pete's history, uh, but you're a drummer as well, Rogue, aren't you? I am a drummer as well. In fact, uh, at Pete's audience with show, a gentleman in the crowd uh, asked Pete who his favourite drummer was. I jumped for my stool, stood to attention, waiting to be announced, and instead he said Gene Krupa. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. And did he look at you when he was saying it? Uh, he did, actually, yeah. He did look at me and start. He said Gene Group and then the pair of us started laughing. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask you as well about the Magical Beatles Museum, which opened in Matthew Street in July of last year. Um, going very well, I would have thought. It's It's gone from strength to strength. Um, as you say, we've been open just over a year now, uh, but it's really started. Uh, the first six months was a bit hairy, just getting the word out there. And there was a lot of confusion between us and another museum, but we've sort of got over that hurdle now. And I'm glad to say that people are realising that what we've got is the most authentic and unique Beatles museum in the world. And uh, it's, it, it's literally going from strength to strength. I'm, I'm, I'm a very happy boy. And tell us about some of the artefacts that you've actually got in the museum, because there's some gems there. Oh, you, well, you've got Pete's original Premier kit, you've got one of George's guitars, Futurama Grazioso guitar, you've got um, the uh, cello from uh, uh, Blue Jay Way, you've got uh, the Sergeant Pepper medals, John Sergeant Pepper medals, uh, you've got Diamond Awards, Platinum Awards, Gold Awards, you've got clothes that they wore, jewellery they wore, we've got the whole gambit, it's all in there. And uh, the uh, Magical Beatles Museum is right opposite the cavern, a little bit further down on the opposite side. That's it. Fifty yards from the cavern on the opposite side of the road. We're right in the right in the middle of Matthew Street, which of course doesn't do us any harm. <laughs> no, I, I bet it doesn't. And it's open seven days a week. Seven days a week. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Uh, well, well done on the celebration. Sixty years. It really is an iconic date. Uh, August the twenty ninth. Uh, 1959 is when it all began and here we are look 60 years later still talking about it Rog. Still talking about it, still celebrating it and those boys are still icons of the music industry. Absolutely fantastic. Well uh, thanks for joining us on GTFM uh, this morning Rogue. All the very best with the uh, remainder of the celebrations and come back to chat to us soon. Uh, thank you very much Gary, uh, Gareth, <laughs> Gary, Gareth and, uh, and thanks to the listeners. Thank you very much indeed. Have a great day. Rise and I'll kiss you.